South Korean Navy ships visit Danang. Development of community-based ecotourism in Hoabak. Hello, it's great to see you back in the RT News. On September the 18th afternoon, Secretary of the CD Party Committee, Chairman of the CD People's Council, Wei Sung An, had a meeting with the Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of South Korea to Vietnam, Mr. Lee Hock, on his working visit to Da Nang City. The CD Party Committee Secretary Nguyen Sung An expressed his strong belief in the fruitful cooperation between Da Nang and South Korea. There are more and more Korean investors and tourists coming to Da Nang. In 2016, Da Nang received nearly 500,000 South Korean tourist arrivals. It is expected that the number of South Korean visitors to Da Nang in 2017 will increase by 20 to 25 percent, and South Korea would be the country with the highest number of tourists to Da Nang and vice versa. Many Da Nang people come to South Korea to visit and study. The city leader made commitment to create more favorable conditions for the South Korean investors and tourists. For his part, the South Korean ambassador Lee Hyuk said that in the eyes of many Korean people, Da Nang is one among the most attractive tourist destinations not only in Vietnam but also in Southeast Asia. He added that currently South Korea is asking for permission to open the South Korean Consulate General in Da Nang City. On September the 18th morning, the two South Korean Navy ships carrying 632 crew members and officers led by Rear Admiral Yang Yong Mo docked at the support starting the official visit to Da Nang City. These ships are the two Korean Navy destroyers. As scheduled, during the four-day visit to Da Nang, the South Korean Navy sailors and officers will pay a courtesy visit to the city leaders and participate in many exchange activities such as sports and cultural exchanges with sailors and officers of the Zone 3 Naval High Command. They also pay a visit to and donate learning tools to the children at the city charity center. In addition, on this occasion, the Korean sailors and officers will also donate 11,000 Korean language books to the Da Nang General Science Library, to the University of Foreign Language Studies under the University of Da Nang and to some other units. On September the 18th evening, the University of Da Nang held a ceremony to honor valedictorians in 2017. Attending the ceremony were chairman of the City People's Committee, Hun Duk Thu, and head of the Da Nang Party Committee Commissions for Education and Communications, Dr. Viet Yung. Addressing the ceremony, Director of the University of Da Nang, Zheng Vung Nam, congratulated the freshmen and expressed his hope that the new students of the university will continue the studious tradition of the homeland, family and university and strive their best to study and contribute to the career of training high-quality human resources for the central region. This year, the University of Da Nang honored 11 valedictorians of its members' universities and colleges and awarded 34 students who have achieved excellent results in the 2016-2017 academic year. According to the figures released by the Da Nang Statistics Office, as of the end of August, the city's total aquatic production output reached 27,700 tons, up by over 7% over the same period last year. Particularly, the fishery output was estimated at 27,000 tons, up by 7.3% of over the same period last year. Over the past years, the city government has implemented many policies on encouraging fishermen to clean to the sea. In addition to supporting fishermen in building new fishing ships, along with many fishing equipment, since 2006, the city Department of Agriculture and Rural Development has trained nearly 3,000 captains and engineers. Besides, the city authorities have continued to strictly manage the fishing activities, preventing the use of explosive electrical impulses toxic chemicals, at the same time not giving permission to build low-capacity fishing boats. 
The focus has also been paid on supporting fishermen to set up their fishing teams, aiming at closely coordinating with each other in their fishing activities. According to the General Statistics Office, the amount of fruits and vegetables imported into Vietnam in the first eight months of 2017 soared with a total value of up to 1.06 billion US dollars, doubling that of the same period of 2016. Fruits and vegetables are also the group of products experiencing the highest growth rate among the groups of imported goods. Currently, Thailand is the country's largest exporter of fruits and vegetables. According to the General Department of Vietnam Customs, in the first seven months of 2017, the import value of fruits and vegetables from Thailand was at 516.8 million US dollars, accounting for more than 50% of the total fruits and vegetables imported value of the whole country. Meanwhile, Vietnam's fruits and vegetables exports in the first day months of this year reached more than 2.3 billion US dollars, up by 47% over the same period of the previous year. China, Japan, the US and South Korea have been the four leading importers of Vietnam's fruits and vegetables, accounting for 85% of the total export value of this group. Vietnam Global Environment Facility Executive Board has just held a meeting on evaluating one-year implementation of the project Preservation of Gertu Ethnic Culture in Association with Community-Based Ecotourism Development in Hoa Bac Commune, Hoa Vang District. The project will be implemented in Ta Lang and Yangbi Hamlets, Hoa Bac Commune in the two-year period of 2017-2018, with a total cost of more than $2 billion. In the coming time, it is planned to promote the training activities for local people about expertise, skills in receiving and guiding tourists, providing computers, plant seeds and animal breeds which are appropriate for the local climatic and soil conditions, developing community-based ecotourism on the basic of preserving having Gertu's traditional culture, building and developing local tourism products, and creating the linkage of tourism product change with related localities. On September the 18th afternoon, the Danak Association for Supporting Orphans and the Disabled held a press conference to introduce the Sixth Pink Hearts Art Show 2017. The program, which is organized by the Danak Association for Supporting Orphans and the Disabled, in collaboration with the Chung Vung Theater and the Danak Radio and Television, will take place at 8 p.m. on September the 28th at the city's Chung Vung Theater and will be broadcast live on DR channel. In addition to evaluating the performance of the association over the past year, as well as honoring the benefactors and praising the typical examples of disabled people and orphans, at the program, works made by the disabled will also be auctioned to raise funds. Also at the art show, the association will grant 150 sets of gifts worth $500,000 each to children in the village of Hope and present 150 wheelchairs worth $350 million in total to the children in Hua Mai Center. At number 52 Bong Ye Street in Seung Chai District, Da Nang City, a group of international artists currently living in Da Nang have opened an romantic reality art exhibition, the first of its kinds in Vietnam and also in Asia. This is the art of transforming a static image into an animation using a tablet or a smartphone application to give it a more interesting view. The artist who has contributed to bringing this new type of art into Vietnam is Chris McBride, a British cartoonist and animator living and working in Da Nang. The exhibition also features 31 paintings with graphics techniques and technology, which can be viewed through using the iJack application. The exhibition will last until September the 30th. More than a thousand unique, colorful handmade lanterns made from the environmental-friendly recycled materials which were displayed at the Handmade Lantern Festival 2017 in Hanoi, aiming at raising charity funds, are expected to bring a meaningful mid-autumn festival to orphans and children with disabilities. 
The event is the first non-profit activity of the Fairyland project, which is planned to be held annually from 2017. The proceeds from the sale of lanterns will be spent on buying mooncakes for orphans and disabled children. Not only creating colorful lanterns, the children also had a chance to participate in the traditional folk games such as Dragon and Snake Up to the Cloud or Cat Catching Mice. The festival contributes to creating a useful playground for children and raising funds for the Fairyland project. Participate in creating the handmade lanterns for charitable purpose is sure to be an unforgettable experience for children in this mid-autumn festival. That's all we have for today's news. Don't forget to log on to drt.danon.vn for more news and updates. Thank you for being with us and see you next time.